put that on a t-shirt. I got head at Joanne Fabrics. So at the beginning of this month or a couple of months ago, the trailer for the Hunger Games prequel came out. Someone that was obsessed with the Hunger Games books and movies all throughout middle school and high school. Because nothing says 13 years old like overthrowing the government. Whenever the new trailer was released, all those feelings of nostalgia and my inner growing love for that franchise had just come flooding back. The one thing that I loved above all that just made me gasp this dress. And if you wanted to see my reaction to seeing the dress for the first time, here it is. And of course, naturally, I had to go, I have to make that. But of course, I told myself it would be way too easy and too simple of myself just to make an exact copy of the dress that Rachel Ziegler wears in the movie. And so, my friends, that is why I have decided to make a 1960s mod dress of Lucy's rainbow dress from A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I just feel like if it's an exact replica of the dress, I won't get as much use and wear out of it as I would a 1960s version of the dress. Because if it's a 1960s version of the dress, I'm gonna wear that bad boy all the time. That's one of the reasons why I decided upon giving it my own twist. Number two is because Lucy's character is a musician in the book. And that just made me automatically think of, for some odd reason, 60s, female band members and female singers from that era. I already had a yellow mod dress just lying around that I don't really get any use out of. I'm just gonna kind of paint and draw the little designs that are on the corset part of the dress. To come to find out, the corset on the original rainbow dress was also hand painted, so I thought that was pretty cool. Before I even started, I sketched out what I had in mind for the design. But then I started laughing uncontrollably at this photo of me that I took with me holding up my design. There was nothing behind those eyes. Just pure emptiness. So for the mod dress, I intended on painting the corset part of the rainbow dress onto my mod dress. And instead of having rainbow frills, I wanted to pair it with rainbow knee-high socks just to give it that extra 60s edge to it. Geared I'd map out the whole process of making this dress just to showcase to the world out there and to the two people that are probably going to end up watching this. Let's face it, Lionsgate, the costume designers, and Rachel Ziegler herself is probably not going to see this video of me making this dress. So with all that being said, let's get started. actually going to use this glue gun, but it looks cool in the shot, so. Now, let's get started. Now, if you've never painted on fabric before, here's what you need to know. It's kind of like having a period, because essentially both processes involve you lying something down in order to collect any leakage that may happen. POV, you're being smothered to death by a sandwich bag. And once you've put down your period pad onto your dress, what you're going to do now is sketch out the design. And once everything is sketched out, you can start filling in everything with paint. Unlike PETA, I didn't learn my painting skills from decorating cakes in a bakery. And sadly, that is why I can't camouflage myself. If you're wondering what paint I was using for this project, it is Magic Fly Fabric Paint that I got from Joanne Fabrics. I also got head at Joanne Fabrics. That is, I got this cabbage head cup. I put that on a t-shirt. I got head at Joanne Fabrics. I think, that, I think that would sell. Enough with the dirty jokes, let's get back to the painting. A nice calamari fish gave me my voice back, thanks in part to me helping out in their revolution. And just like that, day one was at an end. You might be wondering about now. Day three, 
What about day two? And why is she wearing a prom dress from the 80s? Good question. I'm only going to answer one of them. Day two, I didn't do any work. I went out hiking. And to showcase that I was actually outdoors and hiking, I made a compilation of clips of me outdoors. The face I make whenever you make eye contact with me at the grocery store. Me, when guys I graduated high school with try to slide into my DMs. But Doodle Bob says when he finds a pencil. Hoi minoi. Jurassic Park, but without the dinosaurs. Where Smeagol found the one ring. Thank you for watching my Survivor audition tape. What? You thought this was a dressmaking video? Just kidding, it is. Since I got everything filled in on day one, day three required me just to do any extra detailing work that was necessary. It was on this day I realized I would be a terrible contestant in the Hunger Games. Because not only do I have no hand-eye coordination skills, but I have no survival skills either. And I don't eat meat. I'm a vegetarian. So how would I survive? I mean, I guess I could go foraging for nuts and berries. But we saw what happened to Foxface. And it didn't end well. And continuing on why I would be a terrible contestant in the Hunger Games. Let's face it, I probably jumped off the platform too early and explode. So well, I guess you can say that the odds aren't in my favor. But if there's one thing I do know, it's that I would absolutely ace the interview round with Caesar Flickerman. No doubt. No doubt in my mind. I don't know. Is it just me? I just feel like I get along really well with him. I'd also do really well in the jury at Arrival. Because I love a good fashion show. And on day 5, all I did was embroidery work on the pockets of the dress. And yes, that is correct. You heard me right. This dress has pockets. This dress does more for me than women's jeans ever have. Also, side note, I found these crystals lying in the parking lot of a bar. Which I found to be pretty flippin' cool because who just finds random crystals lying around? Unless you're in Breaking Bad. With the front of the dress finally complete, I could finally get started on the back. You know in the original dress, there is no detailing work on the back. But I just really wanted to paint some Mockingjay wings. So then naturally I decided to also add some white roses on the back. Just as a little reference to Mr. Bennett from Pride and Prejudice. It was about here that I realized that I accidentally stained my dress at some point. And after throwing a huge fit, I realized, wait, I can just paint over it. And look at that, my first cover-up job. And finally, we have reached the last day. Now, for the last day, all that was required was last-minute detailing work on the back. Which I found to be quite fun because it involved me working with fabric markers again, which are my favorite. And if you are asking, did I inhale the fabric markers? Yes. Yes, I did. And sadly, they didn't smell good. They just smelled of alcohol. Not strawberries. Not chocolate. Just alcohol. And remember, after your fabric paint has dried, make sure you heat press it. Which isn't very interesting, but you losers watching needed to know.
Okay, so wrap up time. 80, 85 with humidity out. I was taking videos and photos, so I'm hot, I'm sweaty, I'm dehydrated, I'm hungry. <sighs> what I get for deciding to make this outfit during the summer instead of waiting until the fall when the film comes out to make it. I'm gonna get changed into something less sweaty now. My me, I just got out of the shower, so my hair is still wet, and that is why I also look so disheveled at the moment. So let's discuss the dress and the process a little bit more. Well, altogether, this dress took me around 48 hours or possibly even longer of actually hand painting the floral detailings all on the dress itself. The dress itself, I washed it twice, once after I was done painting it and once whenever I was outside because, like I said earlier, I was hot and sweating. When I tell you my hyperhidrosis was having a field day out in that field. It washes really well, had no issues with that. None of the paint came off, didn't stick together. So it washes nicely. I was afraid of wearing the dress because I loved it so much and I was afraid of wrecking it. And because of that, I was afraid of, oh, if I washed this, would any of the stuff come off if I do get any if I do get like any stains or anything on it. So far, no issues in that department. It washes well. Overall, I'm happy with how it turned out. I have no problems or issues or anything I'd like to change about it. I absolutely love it. It's rare for me to envision something and to actually properly execute that out to be exactly how I envisioned it. Because like, you know, sometimes whenever I'm editing a video or doing something in VFX or doing other designing type stuff, it doesn't always turn out exactly how I imagine or picture it, which can be a little bit disheartening at times, but you just kind of learn to deal and grow with it and just love and appreciate the work that you did put out and what you did accomplish. But I'm also happy to say that this didn't happen in this case it just came out completely how i imagined it would because it's a rare thing for that to happen so nothing i would change about it nothing at all it's giving off the vibes that it's supposed to be giving which is a 1960s rocker version of lucy gray's rainbow dress from a ballad of songbirds and stakes hope you i think and at least i'd hope you'd be able to appreciate the time and effort put into the dress to hope that all the vintage collectors and designers out there specifically who love 1960s fashion also appreciate the outfit that i made it's not that i need any appreciation it does feel nice whenever someone gives me a compliment about my work or gives me some type of recognition sometimes so that's about it really um i'm just getting into this YouTube thing. Um, never really done it before and I have no idea that if I'm gonna continue doing it. It's kind of a fun little thing for me to share and put my work out there with other people. Hopefully you guys like it. I mean, that's a big hope at least. I'm really self-conscious about that, about the work I put out. I hope to continue making videos. I have one planned out already that I've kind of already started working on. It's another outfit I'm going to be making and I'm releasing that either next Friday or next Saturday. So if you're interested in seeing that or interested in more content, um, just, I guess, subscribe to this channel. Feels weird saying that because I've always heard people on YouTube say that and it just feels weird coming out of my mouth now. So have an Instagram and a TikTok. I'm gonna give those a follow as well to see some of the other stuff that I create and do on the side besides this. Um, feel free to do so.